Did you know if you have Google Gemini AI for education that it's accessible inside your Google Classroom and then it gives you some powerful AI generative features? Hi, I'm Jamie and welcome to Teachers Tech. I work full time as a instructional coach at a school district. So I'm in and out of classrooms all the time and I know how busy they are and the use of AI, I see real potential. So I'm excited to see how Google's putting this inside Google Classroom. And I know there's lots of AI tools out there. And I also know this isn't a free option in Google Classroom, but I wanted to take the time and show you how it works. This is relatively new and I'm really curious how this will expand and maybe get your feedback of what you think about AI in education. Let's get started with this Gemini in Google Classroom. I'm already logged in to my Google for Education account and I'm going to go up to the app launcher and just open up my Google Classroom. When you have Gemini Advanced available for your Google for Education account, when you open up Google Classroom, you're going to get Gemini Education. I'm just going to select this because right away you're going to see what you can do can outline a lesson plan, generate a quiz, and this will go right into create a Google form as well, re-level text and craft a compelling hook. I'm going to give quick examples for each of these today. I'm going to start with outline a lesson plan. You're going to see that it branches off with the options after I create the lesson plan, it can generate a quiz or it can craft a compelling hook for it. So I'm going to click on this and at this point you'll see I can give it a target grade. Let's say I'm teaching grade 10. I'm just going to leave this as general. And this is where I'm going to give it a topic. In this case, I'm going to say I'm teaching a lesson on the causes of the American Revolution to a high school history class. I want the lesson to be engaging and incorporate primary sources. Can you generate a lesson plan outlining that includes a variety of activities and assessments? Now I'm going to hit generate, but it's going to give me some more options here. Remember when you're crafting your prompts, because this is what we're doing. We're giving it prompts here uh, to give as much information. Uh, you can see there's giving me some suggested learning uh, ob objectives right here. And I could go through and edit these at this point. But what I really want to do is actually just add some more information about this. So maybe specifically about the size of my class. And you can see it gives some examples down here. So I'm going to say that uh, in this case, and I know I already mentioned that it was 10th grade, but I'll say it again. It's a U.S. history class with 30 students. They have a wide range of learning styles, academic abilities, I, including some advanced readers with others. So you can see I'm really painting a picture of what, who is in my class. And then I'm making sure that uh, before it gets generated that they know what tools I have available and interests that the students have. So all this information is important to get the most out of the generated lesson plan. So I'm going to go and click generate lesson plan. So here's the lesson plan. You can see we have our materials. At any point I can delete or copy any of these out. It gave me essential questions common misconceptions, direct instruction, uh, guided practice, independent application, and assessment. It gives me some ideas. Remember, when you uh, go, if you want to go further with this, you could use Gemini to create, whether it be a rubrics for you, uh, at that point, based on the information of how you want to assess your students. So at this point, I can export this to Docs. So if I go ahead and click on Export to Docs, all of this information, you can see that it is here with the different, uh, I can uh, go through it here on the side just by clicking on it. Now, all these things too, if you're using uh, Gemini and if you have it for education, you will also have it in your Google Docs. So at any time I could enter a prompt, prompt in here or rephrase it, but I'll come back to that on a different video. So this is all the information, but I'm gonna go back to the uh, this part where I wanna go to create more hooks this time. So when I go and create or hooks. You can see that here's my lesson or class that I have. Is there anything specific that I want? You can see personal connections or spark curiosity. I'm, I'm just going to say spark curiosity in this one. Uh, you can click multiple ones if you want, but I'll just go to the one and I'm going to hit generate. So now it gave me lots of different ideas. You can see from uh, tax time, primary source smackdown, and so on. Six different hooks that they give. At this point, if I want to, I could export this to Google Docs, just like the last document, document copy uh, and paste them out individually as well. So I'm just going to go back this time, hit close up here, and I'm just going to hit OK. And I want to show you the generate quiz. So when I click on generate quiz, uh, target grade, we'll leave that the same. 
and I'm going to say, let's go with uh, seven questions. Don't know why I picked seven, but I'm going to. Same question here. And what do I want? You can see that I have some different options. I'm going to choose multiple choice and we'll do some short answer in here just for the purpose of demo. And I'm going to click generate. So now we have this quiz here. We have some multiple choice, some short answer, multiple choice. And you can see just how they mixed it up with what I asked it to do. Now, what I like now with this, you can export this to forms. So if I click export to forms, it's going to create a Google forms out of this. All right, so here's my Google Forms that it moved it over to. If I go over to settings, you can see they already made it a quiz here. If I look at the different questions, they already have it marked with the correct answer as well. So I like that, how it goes from creating the quiz to pushing it out to Google Forms, and then you can put it back in your Google Classroom or you have this in your, uh, in your Google Drive. So I'm gonna go back one more time here I'm going to go back to lesson and the last thing what I want to show is the I'll click on Gemini education one more time here and I want to show you how to re-level text so let's say this is a passage for this history class the grade 10 and I have this information that I have I want to make this simpler so let's say I know I have certain students that struggle with reading comprehension and I just want to engage them better with a simpler target here. So maybe I'll just say grade five and I can tell it to keep any keywords. So if there's certain words that I want to make sure that it keeps in, I could uh, write that down here, but I'm just going to go click generate now. So here we have the original text here and we have the generated text and the green means the adjusted for the grade here. So if you don't like it, you can always uh, drop down here and regenerate also. So if there's a different target grade, I could make it simpler, change the grade and regenerate it and it will give me a new one. To generate a quiz or craft the compelling hook, you don't need to start with the outlining lesson plan like I did. You can just start with those and put the information in. So what do you think of all of this? Do you think this is the future of how AI is going to be used with teachers and students where it's going to be built into a learning management system like this? Is this going to be better for online learning or blended learning or in the classroom? Uh, is it going to help teachers save time? There's all these other companies out there with all this AI that do a lot of the same things here. I know the price point is going to be a difficult question, but is it going to be something that school districts pay or not pay? Is it going to save time? all these questions to ask. I'd love to know what you think. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.